So I know that this is a little bit overdue. I've been trying to get to this this week, but look, I've been so busy because I'm actually going on vacation here in the next couple of days. And as you know, everything just backs up the week, week and a half before vacation. So better late than ever, right? So the gift stars Jason Bateman and Rebecca Hall. They're a couple. They're starting a new life and a new home, trying to have a kid. And they bump into one of Jason Bateman's old high school acquaintances named Gordo, played by Joel Edgerton, who's also the director of this movie. And then Gordo starts showing up at their home while Jason Bateman's at work. And then things go from nice, generous, thoughtful to weird, creepy, stalky. And while at first it's easy to want to blame this guy for being freaking Sir Creeps a lot, we start to realize over time that he and Jason Bateman's character have a history and that Frankly, Jason Bateman's character might be more to blame than we initially realize. So let's get into the good stuff. This guy, not, not Gordo, the actor, Joel Edgerton, does a phenomenal job for a directorial debut. I'm very impressed by him. He really knows how to craft scenes with genuine, pure suspense. And using, you know, just an actor, a hallway, a camera, and a musical score. You know, no jump out scenes, no monsters, no gore, no flair, just four basic elements creating genuine, thrilling, and suspenseful moments. And while I do give him full credit for those scenes I'm talking about, the musical score helped him out a lot. It was great. I loved the score. It really amped up the intensity and the suspense of the scene. And there are a couple jump scares. I actually didn't mind them. I actually thought it was kind of more of a wink from the from the director, just kind of being like, Yo, hey, you're not getting off that easy. No, no I'm, I'm going to throw one or two in there. And the three lead performances in this movie are really fantastic, especially by Jason Bateman. He really made it clear why this guy wasn't doing more to solve this problem. This guy is an arrogant, egotistical, self-absorbed bully, and he gets what he wants in life. And he rarely has lost, so he's never had to really consider what, you know, the, the thought of losing. So he doesn't have to think about, you know, changing the locks on his doors. Why? Why? That doesn't happen to me. I'm a winner. You know, that's his mindset, and Bateman sells that, and it's really really a great performance that, that actually had he not pulled that off those things I'm talking about why didn't he lock the door things like that that would have really irritated me and kind of taken me out of the movie and also Rebecca Hall in this is fantastic I mean she she is I would say more so the main character of the movie and we are with her alone a lot of times it's just her and the camera in an empty home and she's got to, she's got to pull it together and, and make it captivating, and God, she does. And Edgerton just kills it in this role, because I just, here's the thing, during the whole movie, I could not decide if he was there for hostile reasons, or if he truly was just being a nice guy. I couldn't figure it out, and that's really a testament to how great he was at not, you know, going too far one way or the other. Now, getting into some of the bad, there were a couple scenes that just felt out of place. It kind of made it feel like a little uneven. Like there's one scene in particular in a parking garage and it was just kind of like, I don't know, it just didn't feel consistent with the rest of the movie. And the ending really was the weakest part of the movie for me. I really wish that it had more of an ending like Seven or, you know, a shocking, disturbing or and really abrupt ending like Kill List, which if you haven't seen Kill List, go see it. But back to this movie, I really wish that it had more of that shocking, disturbing ending that kind of left us kind of like but instead, I was left a little dissatisfied. All in all though, the positives heavily outweigh the negatives that I mentioned. And I really think this is a wonderful directorial debut for Edgerton. I can't wait to see what he does in the future. And I really hope he pulls a Ben Affleck because I don't want him to stop acting just to direct. No, dude, direct yourself in your own movies. Boom, we get the best of both worlds. And while I don't need to see this again in theaters, I don't feel like waiting 10 to 12 months for this to come out on Netflix. I'd rather throw down the five or six bucks to rent this six months from now. Because now that I've seen it before, I want to go back and like piece together all the little things that I missed. Anyways, guys, those are my thoughts. Take it or leave it. But what do you guys think? Have you seen the movie by now? You probably have, actually. It's been out for a week. Let me know what you thought about the movie. Do you agree, disagree with some of the things I brought up? Let me know in the comments section below. Let's talk about it. And thanks so much, guys, for watching my review. I really appreciate it. And if you liked it, feel free to hit that thumbs up button. It goes a long way. And subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you'll get updates on the weekly movie reviews that I put out. So we can do this again soon. I'll check you later. Check you later. Check you later. <laughs> hey, man, you off my case. Oh, man. I just don't want to hear that shit. <laughs>